Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Thanks so much for being here. You know, this is a very unusual time of life, isn't it? Getting into your 60s and 70s and beyond. There's so many wonderful opportunities. I'm just so happy to have you all here with us. And I've got a really good topic today about the fountain of youth that elusive thing that we're all searching for. Not just in physically you know, looking more youth, youthful, but just feeling more vibrant and full of life and with a, with a wisdom. And I think that's the secret, but I'm gonna share that with you in just a second, uh, my tea. My tea is smash, stash, excuse me, pomegranate and raspberry. Uh, it's a really nice tea, I love it, and I've got my pink mug. <laughs> everything's pink today. But anyway, I do hope that you're doing well. Grab a coffee or tea and let's sit down and have a chat. Now, our sponsor for today's show is International Living. Now, International Living is a company who um, advises people about traveling and uh, retiring overseas. It's got some amazing resources, really good reports. They've got people out in the world, checking things out, writing back about their experiences. And if you're thinking about going to Panama, Ecuador, Costa Rica, uh, Portugal, there's so many options. They have got reports that you want to read and check up on. So if you go out to internationalliving.com slash 60andme, uh, you'll see the link that where you can just send them your email and then they'll send you a link to a resource that you can refer to and just open your eyes to the world out there in case you're thinking of retiring abroad. So thanks to International Living. Now, the topic today, Fountain of Youth, speaking of travel, I think it was Ponce de Leon or some Spanish conquistador who claimed to have discovered it many years ago, but you know, the water that you can drink that will, that will make you live forever. But of course, we know this doesn't exist yet. <laughs> And uh, Paula Herrer, who's one of our vloggers, wrote a great article on keys to the fountain of youth, that if you dare to plunge into it. And it's not probably what you think. But of course, nothing here is magical. I mean, we all we talk about on 60 and Me are things that can be done, you know, practical things that you can do. And uh, we live in the real world. So the first thing that Paula recommends, and I love this one, is fresh air. Fresh air. Just go out in the air. I do this every morning now. I go, I have a balcony now. So I go out in the morning and just breathe. Just breathe in the fresh air. There's something so invigorating about it. And you know, when you were kids, remember your parents used to say to you, just go outside and play. If you were got bored and finicky and, and a little speedy, just go outside and play. It soothes you. <laughs> it calms you. And that is a secret to um, to good healthy living and longevity. Um, you know, take don't have to go to a boring exercise class. I'm not a big fan of, of gyms, but go out and run or walk. Just get out into the world. That is the beginning of you know rejuvenating yourself. And just choose something you love: bike riding, swimming. Belly dancing, you can do that outside too. You know, this is the beauty, I think, about getting a little older. You just don't have to worry so much about what people think. And if they notice you doing something kind of kooky and fun outside, they'll just say, kooky person, and it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. The second thing is to stay current. I know technology is hard, and, pa and Paula admits this, that, you know, there's things happening so quickly. And I, you know, I sit on the bus sometimes and I watch the kids with their, with this, with their mobiles and how quickly they navigate and scroll and pictures flashing. And it's like, hmm, th it's, it's an art, but don't forget, they've been doing this since they were kids, little children. You know, we, we, for us, it came into our lives in our 40s and 50s. And so we were not, you know, natives, but, but try it and stay current. Staying current really uh, energizes your brain, energizes your body. And, you know, just be, um, I appreciate the things that you do get through technology that are so, so helpful, like health records. You know, if you go to the hospital or doctors now, it's all there. It's not on those big files of written paper. It's actually in the, t in the computer. They can get access to it super fast and they can see your history. So the health records is one thing. Um, think about the things that you order. I mean, I have, for example, um, I like to shop. I go out shopping. I don't buy a lot, but I like window shopping. And I, I like to get ideas. And sometimes I'll see something and, oh, that's really, really nice. But they don't have it in my size. So I go online at home. I could order it in a minute. And then I have that thing that I wanted that I think is useful to me. Just discovered a place that had long sleeves on your to tops. Uh, three, not, three, not three quarter, but like over just above the elbow. It was like, wow, that's a really big invention. Very useful if you don't want to wear sleeveless things all the time. But anyway, that's the kind of thing shopping has made easier. And progress has in technology. 
we've got to admit, has made our lives so much more convenient and comfortable. And I just don't know what I would do now without being able to check up things. I mean, simple things like how do you convert this weight to that? You know, how do you, or when you're cooking, or how do you um, find your way to a, a particular place when you're traveling? Booking flights, booking hotels, it's all online, super easy. And it's, it is the fountain of youth in that sense, because you can have information at your fingertips, like Bill Gates said, <laughs> and it's, um, it's so much uh, time saving. Another thing, this is getting a little bit more intense now, a little more, a little deeper about um, the fountain of youth. And I think attitude and the way we view our aging process is important. You know, I've said a couple of times, um, Lynn Slater and I were chatting on an uh, interview and she said, you know, Margaret, aging is profound. And when she said that, I got goosebumps because, yes, it is profound. Because why? Well, because we have to deal with so much that can bring, that can knock us down. Loss is one thing that Paula talks about and learning how to handle it. Okay, now this is a hard one because as I'm talking to you, I know that there are lots of women in our community who have lost people that they love. People, you know, husbands, partners, uh, children, grandchildren. It's just heartbreaking. But loss is part of aging. It is going to happen. And I think that uh, it's not just as pets. It can be a job. It can be, oh, it could be a house, it could, whatever. But you're losing things and dealing with loss is in Paula's opinion. And I actually do agree with her here. Um, aging uh, is all about it. You've got to deal with it. And if you don't have a way right now to deal with loss, then you probably need to do that. It's hard, and I think that there's a we have a deck of cards. It's a really beautiful um, aging beautifully deck of cards, and these cards um, are really around themes that we think are super important. It's um you can buy these online. They're I love them. I use them all the time, and thousands of women have bought these. Um, but this one in particular, it says, "Don't give up. Just don't give up." And on the on the back, it's you know you didn't make it this far by giving up. <laughs> you know well, when the going gets tough, your future will be filled with challenges waiting for you to make them into opportunities. We put a paragraph on the back. So this is super important to remember. I think this the fountain of youth is in the way we engage with nature, stay current and thoughtful, and um, you know learn it, be a constant learner, and then also deal with loss, learning how to. Understand that this is um, a challenging time of our lives, but it's a time when we can grow from those situations. You know, we can gain so much. And that's, I think, Paula's last message here is, is very powerful. So that's that's kind of a challenge about the fountain of youth. Have you found your fountain of youth? Maybe it's your grandkids. I always find my grandkids a bit of a fountain of youth. They make me think outside the box. Uh, actually, going on um, the Nomad Cruise with 250 young people a couple of years ago was a huge fountain of youth for me, just being, being with younger people. So maybe that's something for you. But what makes you feel young? I'd like to know. Now, as I said before, it's not young how you look young, it's young inside. So what makes you feel young inside? Leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a conversation. I really do enjoy your, your thoughts and, and share them there and so that everyone else can share. Just put them in the, in the comments section below and uh, I'll read them and leave my thoughts as well. But um, again, thank you so much for being here. Please check out our website, uh, 60andme.com. Also, don't forget, we've got our yoga videos now. Speaking of Fountain of Views, um, yoga videos are totally free now on YouTube. You can actually view them for nothing. If you want to buy the DVDs, that's possible. But this, if you want to view the, the yoga videos, all of them, gentle yoga, chair yoga, gen and yoga, yoga flows. And they're all there for you free of charge. So just a thought, we're trying our best to give you tools and, uh, you know, things to make you feel stronger and healthier and happier in your 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take very good care of yourselves and we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.